Okay, let's get started. Today, I'm going to talk about an improved hybrid time synchronization approach in wireless sensor networks for smart grid application. We will focus on the wireless sensor networks powered by energy harvesting because this is working around the limitation of battery lifetime and replacement difficulties. This is a promising technology for monitoring and diagnostic systems in smart grid. So, time synchronization is a key part in wireless sensor networks. What is time synchronization? So, in other words, communication is required to obtain time information of each node in the wireless sensor networks to synchronize the whole network. So, in consequence, it is necessary to take into account the latency of message transmitted between nodes when extract the such information to synchronize the wireless sensor networks. The algorithm is very important because this is widely used in protocol design, network management, target tracing, and data fusion. It is easy to understand that if we want to achieve a high accuracy, we can send a lot of message, but that will consume a lot of energy. So we should focus on a trade-off between the accuracy and energy cost. That is the question we will address in this paper. So the figure is the six major components of the latency. It is coming from send, access, transmission, propagation, reception, and receive part. This six part make up the critical parts where the latency comes from. Now let's look at first look at two traditional algorithms, which is reference broadcast synchronization and timing sync protocol for sensor networks. They are known as RBS and TPSN. In this paper, we modified the TPSN to make it an efficient TPSN, which we call eTPSN, and then based on that, we will propose our hybrid algorithm. Let's first look at the reference broadcast synchronization. RPS is a typical algorithm that uses the receiver to receiver model. It takes three steps to synchronize the node NS and NR using the given beacon node NK. Firstly, NK broadcasts a synchronization request message to other nodes, then NS and NR record the time when message arrives according to the local time. In the right figure, it is T2 and T3 respectively. Finally, NR and NS will exchange the observation between each other and estimate the clock drift between the two by the observations. So it is pretty straightforward, and for transmitter with N receivers, let's evaluate what is the energy and synchronization accuracy. When we evaluate the energy, we will take into consideration the number of messages for transmission and reception. Here in RBS, the number of transmission is n, and the number of reception is n squared plus n divided by 2. The synchronization error is derived using the below equation. Then you can check the details in the appendix. The RBS approach has the advantage of reducing the critical paths to improve the synchronization accuracy. But as you can see from the equation number two, the suffers from the performance degradation in a dense network, which means N will increase significantly. So the number of reception will increase with the N increase. Now let's look at another model which is called TPSN. It has two phases. The first phase is called level discovery phase where a node is elected as a root node that starts flood to construct a spamming tree. Every center node in the network will get a level ID from this tree. Then according to the level ID, each node synchronizes with its parent node by pairwise synchronization. Given parent node R, 
with the Trojan S. Let's look at the figure. In order to synchronize with parent node R, node S will send a synchronizing request packet with a time at timestamp TY. And the parent node R will record the time T2 once it receives the packet. Then R will send back an ACK packet to S at time T3. And the node S will record the time T4. With an array of T1, T2, T3, and T4, the clock drift delta and the propagation delay D between the node S and R can be estimated using the equations. So this is the TPSN and the number of transmission for this model is 2n. That is the same for the number of reception and the synchronization error. Since it used almost the same model with RBS, as you but every error is halved because we have two transmissions and it add an additional item that is the first item. It is uh, increased in uncertainty coming from transmission message by bit. So if you look at the number of transmission and reception, it is better than the RBS in the dense network because it is linear increase, but it also has its disadvantage that is in the sparse network. So that makes us to consider if we can take advantage of both algorithms. First, let's look at the efficient TPSM, which modifies the existing TPSM. It achieves better energy efficiency by decreasing the number of transmission messages. The difference lies in the synchronization phase. As you can see in the picture, the ETPSN chooses a node close to the parent node. In this figure B, the parent node is MK and the close children node is N3. And we choose N3, it will reply the synchronization request message instead of requiring all the children nodes to do the two-way handshake separately. So it is very obvious that the number of messages is, is significantly decreasing and the number of transmission it is always three no matter how many nodes we have and the number of reception it is 2n plus 1. So the synchronization arrow the delta from k to node i is based on the arrow from k to the node 3 which is the closest node that we choose and then the difference between the times T3 and Ti. So that is the ETPSN. And then if we want to take advantage of both algorithms, we need to think of a way that can intelligently switch between the algorithms based on some threshold. So it is easy to come up with a threshold calculation equation. So we denote, let's first introduce the lambda. Uh, considering the energy used for reception is usually not the same for that of a transmission, the ratio of reception power to transmission power is denoted by lambda, and we introduce it to do the nominalization of the power estimation. So after that, let's make them equal, and then becomes the threshold of the children. And uh, in our algorithm, the first phase is that it's still the level discovery and then for the second step that we can employ switching strategy to synchronize cut. So we'll first calculate the threshold and after the broadcast for each node, if the number of children is larger than the children threshold, we will synchronize using ETPSN. Otherwise we will synchronize we will synchronize using RBS. This is pretty straightforward and simple but it has an amazing effect. Let's look at the quantitative results based on our simulations. So the left figure is the reception and the right figure is the transmission number. So the average number shown 
in the RBS, TPSN, ETPSN, and our proposed hybrid algorithm. Our hybrid is the rightmost one. As you can see, it has the best performance and increase very slowly comparing to others. So in addition to the number of transmission and reception message, it also has a green in the energy. The left is the energy consumption of the synchronization, the whole network, which is the sum of energy used for transmitting and receiving synchronization messages. Right is the energy saving of the proposed hybrid algorithm over the three algorithms, that is RPS, TPSN, and ETPSN. Finally, let's look at the results of the synchronization errors. So the synchronization error of RBS, TPSN, and the proposed hybrid algorithm within 100 sensor nodes is shown in the figure. As you can see, it drops in the middle of RBS and TPSN, which is definitely acceptable to us. Let's conclude it. We propose a hybrid algorithm by switching RBS protocol and ETPSN protocol according to the number of Trojan nodes connected to a single transmitter. It reduces the energy consumption significantly for synchronization the whole networks with an acceptable loss of synchronization accuracy. It helps applications with severe requirement for energy consumption or inconvenience of examining and replacing sensors once deployed. Here is the appendix that we derive the formulation in the RPS for the time synchronization error. That's it. Thank you.